Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody, it's Wendy Sellers, the HR lady, here with my co-host, JC. Hey, Wendy, it's a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me on our show. Oh, dude, I cannot do this without you. Literally could not do this without you, especially in the technology angle. So I appreciate you so much. It's the least I I do for my country, Wendy, let me tell you. (laughs) Hey, it's free education, right? And uh, it's it always interests me that when we have free education, we don't not everybody takes advantage of it, but they're willing to pay for it. So please share this podcast to our listeners so every other person that we come into contact with can get the information that we're sharing. Today, we have an awesome guest, Tina Moser. Hello, Tina. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And I know you are, you have your own podcast as well. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. So you're kind of a podcast expert yourself and we appreciate you being here. <laughs> we want to talk to our listeners today about helping all professionals, um, in, in order to help the business succeed. But we're going to zone in on professionals that are in the recruiting space, training and in or general leadership. Uh, and talk about, you know, what you can do for them as a business advisor. So let's just jump right in and talk about how a business advisor can actually be an employee benefit in order to help not only the people grow, but the company grow. So with that said, tell us a little bit about you know your background and how the heck you got to be this all around superstar that you are right now. Well, back in the day, um, no, just kidding. Um, I, it, it, it's an interesting story and I'll make it as quick as I can, but right out of school, I started as an assistant to the VP of finance for a company who actually started in a basement a few years before I joined, um, did all things finance there and did a lot of, we, one of the strategies was of growth was, um, through acquisition, which I remember being 21 and not even knowing what that word meant. So that's where my knowledge started. (laughs) Um, and then we were acquiring on these companies and these people of the companies that we acquired were just kind of left in in the lurk. And that's when I was like, I want to be more on the people side of things and went back and got my degree at night while working full time for HR. Oh, wow. So while I was doing that, I was able to help on the acquisition side, but then also a lot of that transition of when companies are buying other companies. Um, and the growth was tremendous. We were growing like gangbusters. And literally I was really person number one on a, on the HR team. We had a payroll person at that point. Um, and through that growth over the couple years was when we went from like maybe 300 employees to close to 2000. So oh, wow. our person of one yeah, who was literally going to school at the time to, so I had no experience. Um, Tina, quick question, 2000 people yeah. in a basement. <laughs> no, the company started in the basement. <laughs> Here's another question from somebody who currently lives in Florida. What's a basement? Yeah, I'm literally in a basement right now. (laughs) Wow. You know, the the choice, though, Tina, to to choose human resources, of all things, instead of heading uh, maybe into something more in line uh, with joint ventures and strategic alliances and and the whole marketing angle. Why, Why HR so much? What appealed to you? I think it's because we didn't have one and we were seeing, like, I was on the finance side of these, of, of acquiring these people, right? We're acquiring their business and merging it. So people are assets and, and we had these people that were kind of left in the dark. They didn't have anyone. We're, the finance team was all about the numbers and the growth on that side, which is great, but they didn't, they didn't have anyone. And I just, I felt really called to that and um, it, it was amazing. And so fast forward, uh, in 1999, I was pregnant with my daughter and wanted to not work 60 hours a week. And so I asked that company if I could do, um, part-time and corporate back then is not what it is today, right? There's no flexibility. So they said, no. 
Um, and through my classes that I was taking at night, one of my business classes was to find a business, do a report on it for the class of, you know, build the business plan, that typical stuff. I took it seriously. So I'm like, I'm not a stay home mom type, but I, I'm not working 60 hours. So I took that project seriously and found a brand new franchise that had, you know, all kinds of great marketing, make millions and, you know, part-time type thing. Um, and it was in, in home care. So I literally quit my job on my daughter's one year birthday. It was my last day of quote unquote corporate work and um, started a business because I knew HR and I knew finance. I'm like, well, how hard can it be to be a business owner? And so <laughs> I got my career started as a business owner. Wow. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, our, um, our paths cross a little bit, uh, I also, you know, I'm the HR lady. I have 25 years experience in HR, but no shape or form did I ever intend to go in HR. You know, right. I, I, I got two degrees in healthcare administration and then said healthcare administration moves too slow for me. And I can't, I just can't deal with it. You know, I want change and I want it now. And so um, I randomly ended up in human resources as well. And, it, and then I went back and got another degree in HR. But the same thing, I literally randomly ended up in HR by meeting somebody in an elevator because I had a resume in my hand. They're like, can you learn HR? I said, yeah, I could figure it out. And I knew nothing as well at a small company that I started with and just happened to have really great leaders that allowed me to learn and helped me and, and allowed me to screw up too, which is great because sure. that's really how we learn is from our mistakes, right? The growth doesn't happen without making mistakes. That is true. I, I do have to comment real quick, just real quick here. We're talking about a strong woman in business who's also a mother by choice. We're talking about someone who's then choosing to inspire other people and bring diverse perspectives to the table, who's choosing to invest in, in the human aspect of human resources and not just the numbers, but also learning the business side. And I, it might be too much of a presumption on my part, but would that then also help you make the business case for the people in those particular C-suites and rooms as you moved along? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cause uh, having perspective of, you know, especially during acquisitions and just times of change, times of change, like you have to understand the whole perspective and having both sides was a lot easier to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to jump into um, our next topic in a moment, but, uh, you know, I want to remind our, our listeners that we really want you to pay attention to the, to the fact that having an external business advisor to your organization, to the individuals, the organization as a whole, whether it's a leaders, department heads, even good old regular employees that don't manage another human being, it can be a huge benefit. So when we come back in set episode two, I wanna start talking about that, of how we can help our listeners' teams grow through using your type of services. So we'll be right back. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.